didn't speak to my parents for two years. Hi guys and uh, welcome to the R Markers. Today we have with us a very special guest, uh, Rupa. Uh, and I categorically say Rupa and not her full name because just before we started this chat, uh, you mentioned to me that a woman's true identity lies in her name. So welcome to our channel, Rupa. Happy to have you here with us today. Thank you so much, Karishma, for giving me this opportunity to share. I want to start off with your journey. Tell us, you have a very, very interesting journey and trajectory. So tell us about it. I really didn't know earlier on saying that it was interesting. But I realized over the period saying that I was unique and I thank my father to be bringing that uniqueness in my life. That he was a man of principles. And he never liked nepotism. I only see him saying that when children used to come, uh, textile students used to come from colleges, they'll come and meet him and he would talk to them, interview them, and then he would write a letter and then they would get a job. So all my life when I was growing up, I felt saying that my father is going to write a letter one day and I'm going to be a for me, life is easy from a cycle to a scooter to a car and my life is absolutely easy. So that was the way I grew up all my life. And I graduated much early because I was put in school early. So I at around 16, 17, I think when I spoke to my father one Sunday and said, I, Daddy, this was my conversation to him and I said, Daddy, write me a letter, I want to work. And I think he didn't respond for 10 minutes. And then he had this newspaper which he was reading and closed it in and put it on the center table and he said, this is a newspaper that I buy. I think uh, my job is over for educating you because Gujarat government had free education for children, for girl child. So that entire become graduation fees was paid one time and it was very small, 36 rupees or something. And then he said, I paid your college fees, you will defend for yourself. And I was just shocked at that answer when he gave me and I didn't know what to do. So my reflex reaction was to run into the kitchen with my mother. And my mother's response was, don't bring the mother between the daughter and the father. And that was like, as if my, you know, <laughs> the land is split and I'm going inside. And I said, where do I go? So I went and went, we had a bungalow and I went to my bedroom and cried for, for some five, six hours. You know, thinking, saying that all my life, my parents were everything, my happiness, my joy, my desires, my aspirations and everything. And today both of them have shut doors. Now, where do I go and what do I do? And you know, I was tired of crying, I think. And I said, if my parents have said that you will never, that you have to fend for yourself, I think nobody in this world is going to help me in my life. I think that day that I decided that I will never ask anyone anything in my life. 1986, 87, when I started, 86, 85, 86, my first job was in a petrol pump where I was making bills. It was men all around and those old petrol pumps were different because you had all the cars coming and everything. It was a different journey. But Karishma, if I look back, I have no regrets about any of those things. But I didn't speak to my parents for two years. Because I was I was in that shock saying that they said no. But going back now, I feel what he did was absolutely perfect because he gave me that strength and resilience to face all challenges in the world. Mm -hmm. 